Lauren Schmidt's Legislative Committee issued a report denouncing the grand jury. Two months later, it was disbanded, leaving Schmidt a broken man. The message was not lost on most politicians in Nebraska. I think the message that was delivered was if any legislative committee ever tries to conduct a thorough investigation again, the same thing will happen. It has shaken my faith in the institutions of government. I used to be a firm believer that that uh, the system would work and uh, that people who did things wrong would be punished. And uh, we discovered uh, victims who claimed to have been abused and who the grand jury acknowledged had been abused. But they did not try to find out who had abused those individuals. Instead, um, they convicted Alicia Owen of perjury. Indefensible from my point of view. In July 1991, Alicia Owen was convicted of perjury. Her sentence was between 9 and 25 years. I can't find a case in the history of this country where some kid got sentenced to 25 or 30 years in prison for something like this. If you were going to pick a, a what I call a tell sign, something that says something species about the whole thing, it was in the sentencing itself. For some reason, they had to send a signal to every kid who was a potential witness. My opinion again. A signal so loud and clear, if you dare to come forward, if you dare to talk, watch what happens. Three months later, Larry King was jailed for the $40 million fraud. He was given a 15-year sentence, 10 years less than Alicia Rowan. John DeCamp is now the only man fighting to help Larry King's victims. He has become the lawyer for Paul Bonassi and Alicia Owen. I live in Nebraska. Hell, I was born here, raised here. I have four kids growing up here. Like it or not, it, it's my heritage, you know? Well, if it's a dirty cesspool that I gotta live in or look back on that I left, that ain't good. The real cost, if I were gonna say to my family, has been the fear and intimidation that's put in some of the kids. A couple of the kids are really, really frightened and uh, uh, really had some sleeping problems over it, you know, here, this or that. So that, that's been the real concern I've had. In the face of mysterious threats, John has turned for advice to his friend and one-time boss, former head of the CIA, Bill Colby. Uh, old Bill Colby told me better than anything. The, the one thing that uh, the bad people can't afford is publicity and and knocking you off right now or doing something obvious to you, to one of your kids uh, would bring them more trouble than it's worth. I said y you have to consider the possibility of some danger to not only your reputation but to your person. I mean there are people do react rather violently to some kinds of charges or particularly if they're true there's more apt to be a negative reaction than if they're false. If they're false charges then they can be reacted to in a normal way a libel suit or whatever, but uh, a true, if there's truth in it, there can be a danger in that situation. We've seen that happen in other cases. John DeCamp has arranged to meet Troy Bonner, the young man he sees as the key to the cover-up. He's in great danger. The reason is he carries the secret, so to speak. He served his purpose for the FBI and others by committing the lies that put the seal on the cover-up. His greatest safety probably lies in doing exactly what he knows he should do, that is exposing the whole thing, taking one final last chance and telling the truth. Uh, my fears are that, you know, I'm not going to be believed again. It's just, you know, going to be a whole other kind of exploitation like it was last time. You know, and afraid that that's going to happen, or, you know, I might end up dead, or a loved one might end up dead again. I want this to go forward and, and have something done so that all those other kids who a lot worse, more worse things have happened to can 
come forward and see that action can be taken because there are a lot of other kids out there that, you know, things happen to them that, you know, a lot worse than, hap than happened to me. You have to, if you want to protect yourself and your life and your family's life, both now and particularly in the future, is to use the institutions of government that have been set up to protect you and make them work. That means you go into federal court, you go after the people that have done this cover-up, and you expose it so there's no longer any percentage on their part in eliminating you because the secret's out. That's why we're here today, to, to, look, to, to let it out. I have no doubt that he's now telling the truth, number one, and number two, that he originally told the truth. Potentially, they could decide to charge him with perjury because now he is telling that they forced me to lie. I did lie at Alicia's trial. I did lie before the grand jury. I did it because the authorities were forcing me to do it and I was scared for my family. My brother had been killed when I, when I tried to back out the one time. Potentially, they could charge him with perjury this time. Alicia Rowan is out of prison and on bail, while the camp appeals against her perjury conviction. As he prepares for a court hearing, new evidence of the cover-up emerges, and once again it involves Troy Bonner's evidence. The tapes that were shown to the grand jury had been edited. Everything that matched Troy's statement was shown. That matched mine. Because I know it's was it's edited out. And I think maybe one of the things we want to do is show the judge specifically how where these, you know, little five-minute segments of, look, this tape says this, and then show him it isn't in this tape, and this is the tape the grand jury saw. I'm going to attempt to get these tapes, and we'll see what happens next. But to obtain the evidence, DeCamp must approach some of the very officials he believes were involved in the cover-up, the county attorney's office which ran the grand jury. In the good old Alicia Owen case, 127-194, I'm trying to get the evidence, the tapes and the transcripts of Troy and Danny, Troy, uh, Troy Bonner. They might be kind of scary. Who had that up here once? Yeah. I think there's two tapes. There should be, as I understand, and the transcript of them. But if I could get them, uh, I could start reviewing them and figure out maybe a little bit on what's happening on some things. Look at the county attorneys, they have all the bills up there. Oh. Uh, Robert, let me guess, Robert Siegler has them. Robert Siegler is the prosecuting attorney fighting to send Alicia Owen back to prison. After lengthy negotiations, the camp emerges with the tapes the grand jury never saw. I'm up with uh, $4,000, about $4,000 of cocaine. Okay, and what airline? I uh, flew out of America. Okay, and uh, did you go direct? No, I had to do a stopover in Denver. No, it was a stopover in Dallas, Fort Worth. So you went from where to where to where? I went from Omaha to Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, like an hour, and then uh, a big, big plane from uh, Dallas to Los Angeles. All right, did anybody go with you? Alicia Owen. If this indeed were left out of the grand jury proceedings, then I am totally shocked and, and angry beyond words. Here it is, so to speak, the smoking gun that they could go out and verify, the corroboration. In other words, the linkage to King that was denied. Cover-up. Organized, planned, deliberate cover-up. <laughs>